God bless you, family. What a blessing to be together this afternoon once again. I thank God for your life and for what God is doing in your situation, even through the teaching of his word. And I believe this afternoon God has another word for you. God has something that would equip you in this new, brand new season. And so as you continue to join me in this midday connection, I believe God is fixing some stuff in your life. God is turning some things in your life around for his glory. And so this afternoon, <clears throat> I want to welcome all of you for joining in. I want to welcome those of you that are getting on right now. It's always a joy to have all of you joining in. I wanted to share the page, uh, get a friend to uh, be part of what we are about to receive. And this afternoon, I have a beautiful topic I want to you know, share with you. And I want to start off with a scripture in the book of Proverbs 13 and verse number 11. Proverbs 13 and verse number 11 says, This honest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. Whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. You know, there are so many little expenses in our life that we might be overlooking. But for the most part, that is why we are in debt, because of this little, little debt. And I'm going to be talking about that uh, this afternoon with you. Those little, little debt that brings us right into debt. So um, we, we've done, I believe, about um, four topics so far. And today I'm going to move on. And um, I think we've done five so far. So I'm going to talk to you about uh, point number Six, And this is uh, what I want to call basic expenses on credit. The basic expenses in your life that is financed on credit. Now, Bible talks about a wise man, a diligent man, the man that, you know, conduct his financial life based on the principles of God's word. He gathers little by little. Now, if you get a little by little, I want you to also take note of the little, little expenses. I'm talking about the, uh, you know, sandwich in the morning that costs just $5. It looks so little. It doesn't look like it's going to affect you in any way. I'm talking about a coffee that is $1.25. I'm talking about lunch that is $9.99. I'm talking about that sandwich. I'm talking about that, that uh, soul food. I'm talking about the things we buy that are so little, so it doesn't look like, you know, it's a big expense. But I needed to understand something. You know, the old saying that is on scripture yet makes sense. Little drops of water makes a mighty ocean. I don't know where that came from, but I think there is some kind of wisdom in it. Little, little. Jesus spoke about the little foxes that have the ability to destroy the vine. Little foxes, they destroy the vine. The vine is your harvest. But if you allow these little foxes to penetrate into your vine, your harvest is going to be destroyed. And that is why we make so much, but we just can't see the money. And for the most part, we are like, I don't even know what I spend my money on. I get this money, and for some reason, you know, before I know all the money is gone. Pastor, honestly, I don't buy anything. Man of God, this thing I think is a devil. I make so much. At the end of each month, I can't even find $300 in my account. The devil is after my money. Listen, child of God, let us get real. The devil, you are giving so much publicity. Bible says Jesus destroyed them on the cross of Calvary. Bible says that they've been put under the feet of Jesus. Jesus made a public show of them openly. So don't resurrect that which Jesus killed. Hallelujah. 
And please understand that the Bible says you are seated in heavenly places with the Lord. It means where Jesus is seated, that is where you are seated. And if Jesus is seated in heavenly places and you are seated in heavenly places and the devil is under Jesus' feet, it means the devil is under Jesus' feet and your feet. And if the enemy is under your feet, don't give him a seat by you or a seat above you. Don't give the devil the glory. He's a defeated foe. He has no power over you. You have power over the finances God has given you. And today we want to talk about some real stuff. I don't know how many of you have seen this water bottle before. But if you are human, I want to trust that you drink some of these things every day. It's called water, H2O. It is recommended that you take six of this every day. And a good number of us barely drink six. But let's take an average number of three a day. Let's assume you drink three of this a day. And anytime you feel thirsty, you walk around the store in the corner and you pick one. On the average, you're going to pay a dollar for this water. But if you wanted to be smart enough, instead of going to that store every day and not think that demons are after your finances, you could go to a store and buy 36 cases. You could get it in Walmart. You could even get it in weird stores that you wouldn't expect water to be, like Home Depot. You could get it in Costco. You could get it in Sam's Club, BJ's. You could get a case, and some of these cases are made of 36 of these bottles. Some are made of 40 of these bottles. And I know some of you care about the taste of the water. You have various options, brands you could buy. So let's assume you took an average of a 36 case. It's going to cost you anywhere in a region of $5. You know what that means? Each of this bottle you paid dollar for will suddenly drop to 14 cents, saving you 86 cents on each dollar you spend in the corner store. We're talking about the little foxes that eats up the vine. Now, if you are drinking three of these bottles a day, it is 86 times three Three bottles you're saving on a day. Now, add the numbers in a month. You're going to be saving over $700 in a year. Now, if you do three of these bottles a day, it's $3. 30 days is $90. If you did $90 a month over 12 months, do the number. It's over $1,000. If you bought a case and took three bottles with you to work every day, you will be saving yourself close to $800 in a year. Let's assume you have no use for that $800. Put it into an investment account and do that over 10 years and you'll be amazed what that money will turn out to be. The little things we don't think they are so important. This is just water. And I know some of you do this and in addition do the same with soda and juices. Hallelujah. All these things would just increase. And this is not to talk about how much you spend on daily basis on breakfast. Your average breakfast between your donuts, your coffee, or hot chocolate, your, your, your sandwich in the morning, and, and whatever goes with it, you are looking at an average of $5. You could buy a whole crate of eggs for $2. You know what I mean? 16 cents an egg. And you get those two eggs over a row with some uh, tomato and stuff thrown on it for le less than $3, maybe $2.50. And that whole sandwich you pay $2.50 every morning for, because you are conservative, you're like, I don't spend too much money on my breakfast. $2.50. If you wanted to add coffee, you're way above $3. That whole thing you could do it at home and it will cost you less than a dollar. You see, I believe in practical faith and not just practical faith, faith in little places. I want you to take a look at the apartment you've been paying for every month. That apartment comes with a fridge. It comes with a stove. You pay. The rent you pay includes the cost of that stove, but you barely use that stove for anything. You would rather pay extra to use the stove of the man in the bodega store. Whereas your stove is neatly cleaned. We're talking about lifestyle change. And again, I told you we don't just inherit the beauty or the good looks of our parents. Some of us inherited their bad habits. 
And so if we grew up with parents that were not good money managers, that didn't know how to cook at home, it has a way of impacting our lifestyle. And today we don't cook at home because our parents didn't used to cook. But listen, today there is something called YouTube. There are friends, there are family members that can teach you to cook. What does it take to break two eggs into an oil in a frying pan and toss it over for five minutes before work? I don't know what it takes. What does it take to boil water in a microwave and pour it over hot chocolate and pour some milk into it and put it in a cup and off you go? What does it take? And you go to that store every five minutes. Listen, we got to get basic. You don't need to go for that deliverance meeting over your finances. You need a lifestyle change. There is no demon attacking your finances. It is a habit that must be broken. It is a pleasure and it is a lifestyle and it is an addiction to food out there. We're just talking about water. We're just talking about breakfast. By the time you did an adjustment in your water drinking and soda drinking and did an adjustment in your breakfast lifestyle, you are saving over $2,000 in a year. That could be money that you don't touch. Some of us have worked for 15 years. We don't have $500 in our bank account. That is $2,000 between your water and your breakfast. You could be saving every year that you don't touch. I haven't yet spoken about lunch. Because some of us are big with our lunch. The average lunch will cost you in a region of $12.50. And that is food you could have cooked and brought from home. That could have cost you less than $2. You say, you're crazy. What kind of food can you cook for $2? Yes. Do you know how much a bag of rice costs? 25 pound rice. You know how much that costs? $20. $20 for 25 pound of rice. That man in the corner, you go for his food. He said, this is so food, man. Rice and peas. And you pay $15 over curry chicken and curry goat, that food will cost you less than $3. That whole restaurant meal is a 25 pound rice. They sell to hundreds of people because everybody gets a little scoop. And that whole rice they sell, two meals pay for the entire rice. The bag of rice is $20, 25 pound big bag of rice. Listen to me, child of God. What we need is wisdom. What we need is knowledge, and God is giving us that knowledge right here. And if you are willing to make a lifestyle adjustment, I bet you there is $5,000 that is being thrown away on all these things every year. That could be money you save on the side. Imagine you did this over the last 10 years. 5,000 every year in this lifestyle I just, that would be 50,000. You have never seen half of it in your account before. We don't need to do major things. Tweaking, little tweaking of our lifestyle could suddenly cause us to see money we've never seen. What are the things we spend on credit? And I'm talking about the basic expense. Some of these things, we don't just even go there and pay with it, cash or debit card. We pay with these things on credit card. So now I'm not just buying this water for a dollar and I'm not just paying my lunch for $15 and I'm not just paying my breakfast for five dollars. The moment I begin to scoop out of that food, the banks that gave me that credit are charging me interest. And why would you spend money you don't have on food you're not supposed to be eating and be paying interest on top of it. Not only are you saving this money, but this money is even adding on interest. And please understand, anything that is not business or profit generating must never be charged to a credit card because that credit card will bring along with it interest charges. It means anytime I put any expense on my credit card, it must be an expense that will generate profit so that I can pay the interest that is charged on the money I took from the credit card. And that food you're eating is not bringing you any interest. That soda you're drinking is not bringing you any interest. That restaurant you are sitting and spending $90 with that girlfriend every Saturday it's not bringing you any interest. 
And so not only are you spending $90 with that girl, you're going to end up spending, depending on how long it takes you to pay that money, it could be in a region of double the amount you're spending over something that is not bringing you any profit. Listen, God is calling us to change our lifestyle. There is a place for prayer. There is a place for fasting. There is a place for rebuking the devil. But there is also a place for being disciplined. And there is a place for us to change our lifestyle. And today, as we look at the basic expenses that we charge on credit, some of us charge our rent on credit cards. Some of us pay for food on credit card. We pay for our beverages on credit card. We buy clothes on credit card. We, 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 we buy shoes. We buy bags for credit card, on credit cards. And these are no activity that generates profit. It's, it's, it's one thing to buy clothing as a uniform for the job you do or to buy shoes as part of your clothing for the business or for the work you do. But for you to be investing in clothing after clothing, shoes after shoes, fancy designer bags, that are not bringing any financial returns. It is a disaster. And there are smart ways to buy, even with clothing, with shoes. You don't have to buy when you don't have the money to buy. Please understand. Any of these basic expenses, shelter, your accommodation, your rent, your, your clothing, your, your food, you, you go for groceries, $300, $400, you put it on credit. Please understand those groceries are not yielding any profit. And it is dangerous for you to keep on piling food expense on your credit card. You must spend what you have. And if you must spend on credit, it must be based on an activity that would generate profit. Listen, Bible says that a borrower will remain a slave to the lender. God doesn't want you to be a borrower. He doesn't want you to be a slave. He wants you to come to a place where you can lend unto many nations and not borrow. Listen, Jesus borrowed, but he borrowed with a good cause. Anytime Jesus borrowed, his returns were obvious. He borrowed the five loaves of a young boy and three fishes, he ended up using that which he borrowed to feed thousands of people. And when he was done even feeding, there was a return on his investment. They have 12 baskets full in excess to pay the boy that he borrowed from. And if there was interest, the boy was even in a position to go home with more than he invested in the ministry of Jesus. The only time you borrow is to engage in an activity that brings a return. Listen, your groceries are not going to bring a return. The fancy shoes you're buying is not going to bring a return. The makeup you're buying is not going to bring a return. All the activities of basic necessities of life might not necessarily bring a return. And so we must make a choice when we are spending on things that do not bring return. And so this afternoon, I want you to take a critical look on how you are spending on your credit card. I want you to take a critical look on how you are spending, knowing very well that your credit card attracts interest. Some of us will spend until our credit cards are maxed out and we begin to enter into over limit. We go over the limit and then we are charged over limit. We do the same thing even with our debit card where we don't have money in the account, but then we are spending and the bank is charging us for what? Overdraft fees. And most banks charge an origin of $25 to $35 of overdraft fee per transaction. So if you went to Walmart, you charge $30 for money you didn't have in your account, went to uh, 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 Lord and Taylor, took a shirt, and did the same thing. Each of these transactions that went into overdraft is going to attract additional $35. This is not the best of God for you. God wants to set you free. And so today I want you to join me in prayer and say, Lord, teach me discipline. Lord, teach me discipline. Lord, help me to make a lifestyle adjustment. Lord, I need your grace to change my style of expenses. God, help me to have the discipline to change my attitude and the way I spend. Some of us have strong appetite for spending. Some of us, the reason why we don't cook 
It's because of laziness. Not that we can't do it. Lord, grant me that grace that I may be disciplined enough to buy the right way. Why buy a bottle of water for a dollar when I can pay 14 cents for the same water by buying a case? Let the Lord grant you the grace to do so even as we pray. Shall we pray right now? Lord, I pray over the lives of your people. Your word indeed declares that we must be as wise as the serpent. And one of the traits of the serpent is that the serpent is able to hide and flourish. And sometimes we must learn how we may hide our harvest and not to expose all our harvest to unnecessary expenses. Lord, we pray this afternoon that the strength and the resilience in the virtuous woman of Proverbs 31 will come upon us. That, Lord, we will learn and understand our seasons and understand that the season of harvest is not perpetual, but that there is a season to sow and a season to ha harvest. Lord, may we discern our seasons and know how to make the right choices financially in our lives so that we may be able to come out of debt and experience your financial overflow. Lord, where we have been in discipline in our spending pattern, where we have spent monies that we do not have, where we we have spent on basic needs, basic expenses with credit that we do not have. Lord, may you grant us the grace to be disciplined, to even change the way we buy, the way we spend, and our choices of things that we spend on in the mighty name of Jesus. Let that grace come upon your people this afternoon, even as we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. God bless you for joining me this afternoon. I wanted to go back and replay this recording as we bring it to an end because I believe there is something in today's recording that you need to hear over and over again until a definite change happens in your life. Listen, if some of you would just go to YouTube and learn how to cook some basic meals, you'll be amazed how much money you'll be saving and begin to plant this money into a savings account. And just do it for 30 days. Just give yourself a 30-day trial where you go to these major stores and buy cases of water, cases of juices, buy uh, boxes of sausage, buy, you know, uh, some bread rolls, things that you need for your breakfast, things that you need for your lunch, just a bag of rice, things that you need, and begin to do little cooking. Just do it for 30 days. And after 30 days, sit down and see the difference. And then you can make a decision whether to go forward with that lifestyle change or to continue on the same path that has kept you in debt. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord continue to give you wisdom from his word that will bring you deliverance from every form of debt. Family, I love you. God bless you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Grace and peace to you. Shalom.